we do still think that monetary policy is going to be the driver, at least in the first half of the year. So we still think that it's all going to be about how much the Fed starts to, uh, to kind of take down the pace of monetary tightening and how much other central banks, for example, the ECB and the Bank of England, have to keep tightening because inflation is much more powerful force. So we do think that in the first half of the year, at least, it will still be about central banks and monetary tightening. But we are looking at uh, things like margin resilience. If you think about it, if companies have to take the hit on prices to stop passing inflation through, then they're going to take a hit on their margins. There's a bit of a conundrum, isn't there, when it comes to markets and, and expectations for monetary policy, in that the more excited markets seem to get about a Fed pivot, the higher they go, and that in turn fuels um, prices remaining elevated and potentially fuels inflation further if you look through the ripple effects. How does the Fed and how do other central banks manage that, communicating around a potential pivot, a potential um, easing in, in the high pace of hiking, uh, with the impact of communicating that to the market? Yeah, it's, it's a really difficult uh, conundrum for central banks because they've all tried to move away from this idea of forward guidance, which is telling back, uh, markets what they're going to do and then trying to do it to being data dependent and telling the markets that it really depends on each data point that comes through. And that's led to a lot of volatility. But you're right, the market then ends up chasing its tail. It loosens monetary conditions uh, outside of central banks by prices rallying. And then central banks are almost forced to tighten more. So central banks either have to do something very decisive, very strong, or surprise the markets like the Bank of Japan just did. Mm. or they're just going to have to keep uh, rates higher for longer and the markets will eventually get the message. And I think it's going to be more of the latter, to be honest. Altaf, there's been a, a, a clear sense of wanting to reinvigorate the fight against inflation from many central banks. What is the risk then of over-tightening here? Yeah, there's a definite risk. And obviously that is what uh, people are worrying about when they think about a hard landing. So I think that um, the risk is that the lagged effects of monetary policy tightening, which has been starting since March, are going to ripple through only in the first half or the first quarter of next year. And they're going to meet uh, uh, central banks, which are trying to keep monetary policy tight. And that's where we see the biggest risks. If central banks don't then take their foot off the pedal, then we have a definite risk of a hard landing and possibly a recession. Yeah, that hard landing uh, is one that I've, I've actually always questioned as well. Then, But is the Fed's or even actually even the European 2% target of, of, of inflation still feasible, even, even moving into longer term, 2024 and beyond, it, does that 2% figure still become feasible for inflation? Yeah, we think that inflation has gone a bit too high, well, definitely far too high, and it's coming down too slowly for us to comfortably get back to a 2% level any time next year. So there is a definite scenario, it's not our base case, but there's a definite scenario where you factor in uh, you know, energy prices staying high, the green transition, deglobalization, where you could see uh, inflation settle in a higher regime, say more like 3 to 5% for a number of years before coming back down. So I think it's less likely that inflation comes gracefully back down to 2% any time in 2023. Mm. 2023.